Exceptions are like landmines sprinkled in your code that consuming clients have no clue about. Start being honest and explicit. What's going on everybody? It's Derek Martin from CodeOpinion.com. If you're new to my channel, I post videos on software architecture and design in .NET. So if you're into those topics, make sure to subscribe. So what I have open here is the eShop on Web demo project that I've been using in some of my videos. And when we talk about honesty and being explicit, I wanna look at specifically this method here that we're using this basket service and it's uh, calling add item to basket. So this is when you're on kind of the home page and you can add a item to your cart, to your shopping basket. Now looking at this now, if I kind of look at the definition, this is gonna go to an interface where we have a bunch of parameters, the basket ID, catalog item ID, price and quantity. And then it returns an integer. So this is a signature we're looking at. Now as a consumer, if I'm gonna be implementing some new feature related to this basket, and I'm gonna use it in the basket service, and I'm looking at this method, is there anything that stands out um, that I need that I'm not quite sure about? Well, I know what all these parameters are apparently. I'm not really sure what this return parameter is yet. So maybe I should dig into it here. And I can see that it returns whatever add uh, item does to the actual basket. So we're going kind of a lay another layer deep here where we're getting this uh, basket object out, calling add item to it. So let's dig in a little bit deeper. And now we can see that it is returning the quantity. So we're returning the quantity because if it's a brand new item that we're adding that we don't have any yet, um, we're gonna add it and then return the quantity. If it's an item we already have in our basket, then we are going to add that quantity to the existing item, so we're just gonna increment it and then return that quantity. Okay, great, so we understand what's happening here. But is this interface, is that everything that it does? If I'm using this as a client, is that the expectation? Well, no, it actually isn't entirely that, and it's, a little difficult to understand this because just looking at the implementation here, there's nothing obvious here that's occurring. But again, when we digged into the add item, I'm also throwing this exception. So two levels deep where I'm actually, or above, where I'm actually using the basket service, I have no idea that it throws this exception. Now, when you're writing this code, meaning you're writing the client code, how do you know that you're actually gonna get this exception or that this exception even exists. Tests can help you there, but again, if you're if this is like a NuGet package, if you're creating a library that consuming clients are gonna use or it's even within your project, I wouldn't have any expectation that developers are gonna dig through the entire call stack of everything that gets called to see what exceptions get thrown, what the guard clauses are, etc. So how can we actually fix this? Well, let's dig into that. All right, in order to start making things a little bit more explicit, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create actually a new type. So I've created a new class here called either. That's two type parameters, T left and T right. Now, what either is gonna do is it's gonna contain a value that's either gonna be of T left or T right, but only one of um, those types. And what we can use this for is in our basket service, instead of uh, just returning that integer, we can return an, return an either that's gonna be of type int on the T left, or the T right will be of say an exception, the invalid operation exception. And then from there, our client can then decide what to do if either situation occurs. So let's implement an either. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I need to record what both of these are actually gonna be. So we'll do a T left and we'll just call this left. Oops, let me make this private. I'll do T right, right. And because you're only ever gonna be passing when you make an instance of either the left or the right, I just need to keep track of which one it is. So let's do a private read only bool and we'll say is left. Then I'm gonna make a constructor for one for T left. And then we'll, we will set left equals left is left is true. Uh, let's make another constructor for T right. is left is false. Now in order to get the value out of the either, I'm gonna create a method called match. So match is gonna return of type of T and we're gonna pass in um, 
a func that's going to be used for whether the left is the value in it. So we're going to have t left here, and then t, and another func of t right with t, I'll call this one right. And then what I can do is return is left. Then what I can do is call left with our left value. Otherwise, we'll call right with the right value. And that is match. So we will use this to define both the left and the right in either situation. What this does is it forces the client um, to deal with whatever the result is. And you're designing what the result is by either it's going to be this value or this value. So if we kind of jump back to our basket, we can start using either. All right, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use either from the add item uh, to return that from add item. So instead of just returning the int, now I'm going to be returning an either of int or an invalid operation exception. Now this could be a separate class that you could create that's like a validation result that maybe has different uh, validation results within it. Um, but for simplicity, just to kind of refactor this, that's what I'm going to do. So instead of throwing this, I'm actually going to return a new either um, that's going to have the invalid operation exception inside of it. Then instead of returning the quantity, same type of deal here. I'm creating an either, but I'm returning the left side instead of the right side. And then subsequently, the exact same situation down here, we're going to return the existing quantity. All right, so that's that class. All right, so now let's jump over to the basket service because we need to update it. So now we can see result is returning either. So let's update this one to pretty much be the exact same thing. So it's gonna be an int or an invalid operation exception. And then this is complaining because our interface needs to be updated. So let's do the same thing here. All right, cool. Now, so this should be fixed, which it is. Our interface is good. Now we can go to where we originally started this whole thing, which is now we want to deal with the result of the add item to basket. So now we know that this could possibly return um, an invalid operation exception. So what we're going to do is instead of just assuming everything worked and redirect a page, what I can do is call result and I can call match. Now again, the, the two um, matches here, the first one's going to be for the left side. So what I can do is I can say that I'm going to have my quantity it comes up for me. I can show you the IntelliSense. So there's I is going to be quantity. And here I'm actually going to do the redirect page. We don't really care about the quantity, but we know that's our success. And then on the flip side here, we are going to get our exception which we could, I guess if we had a custom page in this particular case, I can do a bad uh, request result and we can do that. Now this is complaining because these are two different types, but they actually are the same underlying I action result. So there we go. So now I'm dealing with both cases. If I get an invalid operation exception, I can send back a bad request rather than what it would do right now is throw 500. And again, this could be some custom um, particular error page that you have. And again, I'm just using the invalid operation exception here. This could be a custom class that you have that defines what the actual, um, if there's varying degrees of validation errors. But this is how to make things more explicit so that your callers know what to expect. And it's a little bit more truthful. It's a little bit more honest than just saying it returns an int, yet it can throw exceptions in the back. All right, so that's it for this video. Again, here's my simple implementation of either. You can probably find some NuGet packages or even simpler than that, just different implementations that you can pop into your own projects. So hopefully that helps making things a little bit more explicit and stop putting down landmines in your code bases and throwing exceptions. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for more software architecture related videos.